How do you test the reversing valve for a mini split? In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to take this EG4 mini split outdoor unit apart, locate, identify the reversing valve, then use a meter to check that reversing valve. And we're gonna discuss how do you know when that reversing valve is energized, not energized, and what to expect from the system as far as performance. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, this is Taddy Digest, let's go. Before we take the outdoor unit apart, we want to disconnect the power. Since this is a hybrid mini split where we can use not only the grid, the AC power, also the PV power, we've got to disconnect the two power supplies. So the first power supply we have to disconnect is our AC power. So I unplug the disconnect or you can turn the breaker off. Then we're going to take our MC4 connectors and we're going to disconnect them at our outdoor unit. Looks like I just broke my little tool here, but I'm going to get those disconnected. I'll post a link in the description for this little tool here so you can disconnect the power for your hybrid mini split. Now that our power is disconnected, we need one tool and that is our drill with our Phillips bit. You can use a Phillips screwdriver, but it's going to take you a lot longer to take these panels off for this outdoor unit to actually get to that reversing valve. So what are we gonna take off? We're gonna take off the top panel first. We just got Phillips screws that hold that panel in place. Make sure you keep the screws so you can put them back in the holes. Then you get ready to put the mini split back together. Also, you wanna wait at least 15 minutes before you start taking this apart just so that you don't have any residual voltage because the inverter board of course has a capacitor bank and it has to trickle that power um, for you not to have any voltage so just be careful now if you look down in the top of the unit you can actually see the reversing valve see that valve there and then the blue wires that go to this a uh, black solenoid. That right there is the reversing valve. So we wanna take this front panel off now so we can actually see up in where our plug goes to our main controller or inverter board. Moving the front panel. So screw here. We've got screws along the bottom. One, two, one more here, one more here, and that should be all the screws for the front panel. One more screw right here that I missed. Now we're gonna take off the front panel since we removed the screws so that we can get to the wiring that goes to that main controller, right? So we're gonna take and put our hand right here on the bottom of the panel. I'm gonna put it on this little guard. We're gonna pull up and then out because there is hooks right here. One, two, three. And then same thing for the other side, pull up and then you can pull out. See the hooks? One, two on this side. So two on this side, three on this side. Now that we've removed this front cover and the top cover, we can see where our plugs are for the main controller. Now we can see inside and we can see the whole reversing valve. We see the three lines on the bottom and the one on the top. You can see the one on the top is connected to the discharge line of the compressor. The one in the middle on the bottom is connected to the suction line of the compressor. This is the inlet pipe for the compressor. This is the outlet pipe. And then the other lines, the two on each side of that suction line on the bottom that is a carrier pipe where we carry that refrigerant to either the outdoor coil, which is the condenser during the cooling mode or the evaporator during the heating mode. And then our indoor coil, which is on the other side of this wall, which is the evaporator during cooling and the condenser during heating. Now let's locate the wires that go to the main controller from that reversing valve. Let's locate that plug. You can see there's two blue wires if we check in between this switching board and the main controller, you're gonna see right there is the white plug. 
Now, it may be easier for you to check the voltage to that valve right here. Let me explain. This is our main controller. There's a cover over the main inverter board and there's a schematic right here. You're gonna see it says four-way right there. Two wires going to a plug and the plug has a label that says four-way and CN16. So let's take this cover off. To take the cover off, get a small flathead screwdriver and then you're gonna take these little locks right here and you're gonna pull them back Try not to break them. Pull this one back and then lift the cover up. See, that side came up. Now the other side, and I took these wires out of this little track. Pull this side up. There we go. And there it is. There's the cover off for the main controller. Now we're gonna locate the four-way valve on the board. And you can see it plugs in over here and it says, four-way and we've got two little spots where we can put our leads for our meter so we can test and see the voltage now I'm gonna plug in the disconnect and I'm gonna make sure that I don't get anywhere near this fan because this is dangerous also don't lay anything on top of the unit like I have now I'm gonna remove all this now let's plug in the disconnect so we can get some AC power to our hybrid EG4 mini split as far as voltage you should see at the valve itself should be 240 volt AC. Most mini splits energize the reversing valve during the heating operation. And they're using 240 volts AC power to do so. So let's take, we took this cover off. That way we can get to L and N. And now we're gonna check from L and N and make sure we have 120 volts. Now, if we go to our four way valve, right? Right here, where these little spots are on the board. Look at the meter. What we got? Zero. Wait, we we got something. Hold on. Not really nothing. Well, three, two point nine. So that means that our reversing valve should not be energized. I took the cover off for the copper connections. I'm gonna explain the conditions of these copper lines during the heating and cooling mode so you know what to expect. So this is our larger copper line. This is known as the ga gas line. Going to the suction line service valve or gas service valve. This smaller line is known as the liquid line. And this is going to our liquid line service valve. This larger line during the heating mode should be hot. It should be hot to the touch. It should be over 100 degrees. That should be the temperature of the line, more than 100 degrees. And if you hook up your hose and your gauge, this pressure on this line during the heating mode should be over 300 PSIG. During the cooling mode, this same line is no longer the hot gas line. This is carrying a low pressure vapor and this line will be cold to the touch, and the pressure of that line will be around 100 PSIG. The temperature of this line will be about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, these are just um, typical numbers, but conditions change, and then pressures and temperatures change. So just know that. But during the cooling mode, the larger line is cold. During the heating mode, the larger line is hot. That's what I want you to know. Now I wanna explain that before we start this unit in the heat mode because I'm going to have my gauges hooked up and I'm gonna have a temperature probe to measure that temperature so you can see that in real time. Now let's hook up our gauges together so you know how to do it. So we're gonna take crescent wrench. We're gonna take the service valve cap off. Then we're gonna install our 5 16 to quarter inch adapter. Make sure you wear gloves and make sure that you are an HVAC professional if you're doing this or you have some knowledge. Now let's hook up our hose. I've got my high side gauge connected and that's the gauge you wanna use also high side hose. I could use both of mine, 
because they're rated for the pressure. I could use low side or high side, but your gauges may not be digital and they may not be rated to handle the pressure that you experience during the heating mode. Look at our standing pressure. It's cold outside. The colder, the lower the pressure. See, it's 117. That's standing pressure. Now I'm gonna take my temperature probe and I'm gonna put it right here. So I can measure the temperature of that line. Now let's go turn the unit onto the heating mode. I wanted you to hear the sound when I turn the unit on the heat mode. You can hear that little swish. That is the reversing valve switching. If you hear that, that means that that reversing valve just switched. You heard the swish. So I wanted you to hear that. Now we can check the voltage. One thing I want to mention is you do not have to take off the front panel. I only took off the front panel so that I could show you where that plug went in because without that front panel off, we can't see that white plug, right? We can't really see the full valve, but I had to take it off just to show you. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I don't want you to take off the front panel because this is dangerous right here. We could end up getting hurt by getting hit by this fan blade. Uh, we can break the fan blade and then we won't have a system that will work. So I've got my meter on volts AC and I'm gonna check right here at the pins where it says four away. And you can see it looks like we got some voltage. Look at that, 126 volts. And normally I would see 240, but I guess the system uses, uh, it uses a different voltage. So I guess it's just 120. But we know our valve has voltage, that's good. I wonder if I can take and place these leads. No, that would be too dangerous. I would really have to take that board and flip it upside down to get to that plug. Let's go ahead and check. It hasn't been running very long and we do have the cover off so it is gonna affect the pressures and temperatures. But let's go ahead and check our pressure and our temperature on this hot gas line. It hasn't been running very long. Looks like it just switched again but the, the temperature was, looks like 77. Yeah, it's dropping. So I'm gonna get it running again. I don't think that it's gonna stay running very long just because of me having all the panels off, uh, but I could go ahead and put the front cover back on. I think that might help. I put the panels on temporarily so we get a better reading and the unit will actually stay running. Remember, if you got a 12K model, your power supply, your AC power should be 120. So you're gonna have 120 to that reversing valve. And then if you've got a 24K or higher or a 240 volt power supply for your mini split, you're gonna have 240 volt AC to that reversing valve. So I asked myself the question earlier, wow, I'm only getting 120. Well, duh, it's 120 power supply for your mini split, Tad. So if I had 240 volt power supply, then I'd see 240 when that valve has uh, power, when the solenoid has power for that reversing valve during the heating operation. So now the unit's been running about five minutes with the panels on. Let's check out our pressures. This is a 410A model and our pressure is 359, 360. PSIG saturation is 108. Let's check out the hot gas line. Looks like it's about 85. 86, 87, so it's going up. Now let's go inside and check our supply air temperature. Come with me and you'll see my solar powered shed. Come on in guys. I got the probes ready. Be careful, I'll probe you. All right, so I've got my remote controller set to 77 degrees, if you can see that. It's kind of hard to see it. And my mini split is actively pumping out the heat. We've got one probe I'll put up here. And it looks like it is in the 60s inside the shed. So yeah, it says it's 63, oh, 62. So it is pretty cold in here. Now we're gonna take the other probe, put it right here directly in the supply air. 
and we'll be able to see we should have a good temperature split. And what I mean by that is at least 20 degrees between return and supply, but with these mini splits, I've seen upwards of 30. And you can see it's climbing. And this will reflect the temperature that you see on that hot gas line outside. So if you're measuring the temperature of the hot gas line, then when you come in and measure the supply air temperature, you should see a pretty close number there. Uh, sometimes the, the line outside is a little bit hotter, but up here we got 62, so that's a, a good temperature. And then down here we've got 95. So we've got over a 30 degree split and it's climbing, it's climbing. We're probably gonna see over 100 here. Yeah, 97. Oh. 98 oh yeah it's pumping out the heat remember outdoor unit runs first in heating mode and then whenever coal temperature reaches a certain amount I think it's like 90 degrees then the indoor uh, fan will start running so if you turn on heat mode and you come over here and go well it's not running well the coal's got to get hot first otherwise you'll get a cold draft then during the cooling mode it's the opposite Indoor fan runs first for comfort. Then the outdoor unit kicks on, got a three to five minute delay. Now look at our temperature, 100. So we've got almost 101. We've got, it's about to hit 102. So 40 degree temperature split, take a look. 40 degree temperature split, number at the top, 102. So it's 62 degrees in here. My mini splits pump it out 102 degree heat. That is fantastic. Let's go check those pressures again. All right, our pressure is 373. And then our temperature is, let me get it back on the line. It's in the 90s, so 91. I've seen that line hotter than 100 degrees. It really just depends on the conditions. Make sure that you're safe when you're uh, taking the unit apart, make sure there's no power. Uh, when you're checking with your meter, make sure that you have the right protective gear. You may need some gloves like these. Uh, make sure you, you have safety in mind because this can be dangerous. That's why you really need to hire a professional um, if you don't know anything about uh, troubleshooting or working on a mini split like this. I've got a video on how to replace the reversing valve and it's more in depth on the reversing valve and the way it works. If you wanna check out that video, I'll put the link to that video down below. Go learn more about reversing valves and how to replace one. If you need to charge a mini split, but it's so cold outside, you cannot get the unit to go into the cooling operation. What you can do, but you gotta be careful because you wanna make sure that you don't get shocked or you don't break the fan. What you can do is you can turn the unit into the heating mode, right? Get your gauges connected. Then you can take and pull the plug for that reversing valve off the main controller and it will de-energize that valve and it will run in like it's in cooling mode. You'll be able to charge the unit. Um, but you need to make sure you factory charge always. That's the best way to charge a mini split. How do you factory charge? You look on this little label here and it's gonna give you the factory charge. Uh, it says refrigerant 410A, 38.8 ounces. So that's what this unit uh, needs to be able to work properly. This is 410A. If you don't know how to charge vacuum or recover the refrigerant or even pump a mini split down, I've got those two videos down below. Go check out the link to those videos and learn more. If you wanna learn how to replace the main controller or test the main inverter board or the sensors for this type of mini split, I put a video link down below in the description. You can get this at Signature Solar and there's a discount code for you down in the link in the description. I love my solar mini splits. Really good way for me to save money and be able to use PV power, the sun. So it's really nice to have this type of mini split. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comments what it was. If you got a question, remember, questions can lead to new content. But if you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, this was Taddy Digest, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.